And the clue to this is the fact that we have translational invariants in the problem. What do we mean by translational invariants? It's the fact that the rules of hopping are the same at every point. If the particle is here, then there's a chance u of hopping right and there's a chance v of hopping left. If the particle is there, it's the same chance u of hopping right and v. So the rules of the game are invariant under translation. Once you have translation invariance in any problem, you can take it as a safe bet that e to the i q r will play. So you just try that as a trial uh, trial uh, stage, and you'll verify that it actually works. So what shall we do? We'll, well, you might might have to rewrite. I don't want to rewrite the matrix. I want to just try the stage where the R flow has the element E to the I Q R. Okay. So it starts with E to the I Q and E to the 2 I Q, E to the R I Q, up to E to the I L Q. What? I won't try it. Is this okay? So this, I'm, I'm trying to prove that prove by plugging in that this is an eigenstate. That's what I'm doing. Okay, this is, why do I try this? As I said, it's suggested by translation. And we'll just verify that it is. The question is, is this equal to some eigenvalue lambda q times the same eigenvalue? Because I haven't normalized it, but that is it. And it's immediate to see that this is satisfied because when you multiply out, what will you get when you put that into here? Yeah. So you will verify that the equation, the eigenvalue equation, reads u times e to the i q r minus 1 minus u plus v e to the i q r plus v e to the i q r plus 1 equals and the q e to the i q r. Of course, the easiest step to spot is this. It should equal that. So is this. This is diagonal. This is the right step from the previous site will bring you into r or a left step from the next side. You can go back to the equations and just write what this is what it is. Fortunately, each of the IQR cancels out, and you're left with the equation which determines lambda q. Then here's a formula: lambda q is equal to uh, minus u plus v plus u to the minus k to the minus IQ plus v to the IQ. Because we haven't said what Q is. As of now, Q could be anything. The only site for which this does not work is actually, I mean, does not work automatically, is the last site. Because the right neighbor of the last site is site 1. Okay, so you write the equation for that like last site. Okay, so I'll leave that as a small exercise. Exercise. Right the analogous equation for involving side 1 and L and you will find that that actually is satisfied provided Q is fixed to be something and the answer is OK so please verify this OK if E to the I Q L equals 1 if you want we will do it but let's move on this is handleable is this a proper thing for tutorial? If people have questions, you can say that. But it's uh, okay, so I'm going to move on. Right? So this determines q. So q is 2 pi times integer over l. If you want, we'll give the integer name. We won't call it n because n comes in problem, we'll call it uh, something k. Unfortunately, k is a less way back. Never took k. 
zero and two up to n minus one. Q equal to zero corresponds to one number. Okay, so this is what it is. We found the eigen. This is as usual in all all problems like it. Harmonic oscillators, etc., in one dimension. The boundary condition selects Q. Translation invariance implies E to Q. Okay. What about left eigenvectors? Verify that the left eigenvector is actually the same, almost the same, e to the minus I Q R. Please verify. Okay, so we found everything in sight. Now, now therefore we can work out some physical model. So let's see what it is that we would like to work out. Uh, let's uh, start with. Okay, let's uh, do the following. Okay, let's become slightly formal again and say that what we had in our hands was the equation d by dt p uh, w times dt which we integrated to find dt into the wt times p0 this being the eigenvector specific not like it, the vector specification of the addition equation. But this, I'm just going to tell you, this is sum of a new eigenvalue decomposition, e to the lambda new times t, and we'll get a new left with p0, new mark. Normalization. At this stage, we need to normalize. Now, you all want to remember normalization, right? So, what mechanics are you normalize? Integral mod psi squared over all space, or summation over all space, something should be equal to 1. Here you have left and right eigenvectors. Which should you normalize, right or left, and how do you do it? The answer is you should take a mixture. Normalization is always the following. If you have mu sub L, so how do you express orthonormality when you have left and right? Just mu sub L, scalar product with mu sub R, mu prime of R is equal to delta mu mu. In other words, if left and I mean, they refer to different eigenvalues, the answer is zero. But if they refer to the same, this is the correct normalization. Okay, correct in the sense that this is the one that will yeah, it would be nice properties. And nice means here uh, even the ability to expand in this form. This is true provided. So this sort of eigenvalue, eigenvector expansion clearly defined, depends on how you normalize the eigenvalues. And this is a so I'll just leave it as a statement verify this. Okay. Alright, but this is easy to do in our case. So what is the normalization? Well, let's take the unnormalized left eigenvector here. Yeah. Let's take the un no, unnormalized right eigenvector. Okay, so try it out. So you take the left eigenvector. So we are working on the normalization squared. Or normalization or whatever you want to call it. Normalized or something. Okay, and here is the right eigenvector with e to the IQR in the proper position. Multiply out and what do you get? 1 plus 1 plus 1 L times. So this is equal to L. Okay, so this means when we come to this stage, the proper normalization here will give us 1 over L sum over nu e to the lambda nu t with lambda nu we will figure out. Now I have to put in the explicit e to the minus i q r something that eigenvector. Mm, yeah. 
with P of 0. So here I'm putting in the unknown estimates to see what I mean. Because I'll put on the program. And this one will be like P to the I Q R. That that I can put. Okay. But let's say the walker started at the origin. Let's relabel the size, sorry. So yeah, uh, yeah, rather than calling the zero to the so minus L like L will go from minus L by to twelve, something like that. So the origin. Then P of zero would be the vector zero, 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 up to up to the point you come to the origin. There's a one there. Zero, zero, zero. Agree? Because that's the initial condition. Yes, this is at the origin, so we pick up e to the i q0, which is 1. So this gives you 1. And this gives you, uh, well, make the eigenvector. Alright, so now if you wanted to find, for instance, the by the eigenvector e to the minus i q r. Okay. And the only one which will fire is the one with r equal to zero. R equal to zero. This is r equal to minus l by two and such This is r equal to zero. Okay. You don't have to do so. If you like it, start with something else, you could put in e to the minus q r initially. But I'm just trying to illustrate you. Now you have everything in your hand. You can work out whatever you want. Uh, maybe we won't work anything. Uh, ask for the probability to be at site R at time t. Using whatever we have. Okay, so what will this be? This will be the scalar product Now you do 
Those formulas is no more risk. Into the eye, it kills it with the cosmic result. Okay. Do it, substitute it, gather terms. There's even eyes in the material. Sign of time. Sign of time. Sign of time. No, no, what is plus? There's many minuses, just one. What is the first time? Plus? Yeah? Yeah? Plus I Q times R minus U plus V. U minus V or U plus V minus V. And in this way, sine Q over Q times T. Except it's a Fourier space. 
Fortunately, we have a Gauss theorem. The one thing everybody knows, even if they don't remember the definition of Fourier transform, everybody knows Fourier transform of a Gaussian is a Gaussian. <laughs> so the Fourier transform of this Gaussian is a Gaussian. It's not quite a Gaussian, you have to complete the square to do that, but that everybody can. So I'm just writing down the answer. So the answer is square root of 1 over 4 pi dt.
In fact, if you think about it, this is describing a problem that is in equilibrium. And it's a problem that you've studied probably in school. Maybe nowadays 11th standard is called college. So, I don't know, somewhere you must have studied. There's something called the law of exponential atmospheres. No? Well, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, in terms of the density of air near the surface of the earth, it's a little larger than a little higher up. But by the way, don't, don't, don't extrapolate too much. There are other things that happen in the structure. So, you know, we'll go a little my idea. So, so, that's a few thousand feet for meters. Okay. The, there's a parametric formula. Maybe you know just that. Okay, he's going to do it next. Okay, so all the, I, I need not say anything further. But this is a problem in equilibrium, and it will describe its effects. But uh, A, the steady state has changed drastically. No, A and B. I mean, A has changed what it looks like, and B it doesn't carry it up. The last thing I wanted to say is something about the spectrum of eigenvalues. So let me just make the comment and then move on. Actual value of the eigenvalues. 
So in the case of low bias, I mean, in some sense, the eigenvalues are distributed here. So here is the steady state eigenvalue, which is zero. And then the rest are, you know, all crowded in. 